game is, is a great setter of pace. Uh, and if anyone can win this one, it's going to give them, well, a, a great head start. Absolutely. And here we go. Remember, best out of four rapid games. If they are tied, then we will head straight into tie breaks with Blitz and Armageddon. And we have three pawns on the board. We do. And it's a Queen's Gambit. It's the Queen's Gambit accepted. And I have a feeling this is going to go into one of the sharpest lines of the Queen's Gambit accepted as well. We see that Black is a pawn up right now and he guards that pawn with his queen. This leads to a long forcing variation. Look at all the attacks and counterattacks that are about to happen. White is threatening a massive knight jump to give a check. Uh, but Black, meanwhile, just developing calmly. He's given his pawn back, level material now. And uh, often this involves a bit of a uh, sacrifice for Black. Black's rook in the corner. Watch out for that one disappearing if the white knight goes and uh, grabs it now. This is a check. And uh, this has been debated at the top level quite a lot recently. Aronian himself has played it. I think he's even fallen to a defeat or two. Um, he's played it on the white side. And uh, yeah, this one is very surprising to see Aronian switch colours and play with black now. Yeah, and uh, on that subject, you're completely right. Aronian did play with the white pieces. He beat Na Hikaru Nakamura in this exact mm. opening with the white pieces and Lenia Dominguez mm. yeah. and, uh, wow. in the uh, FIDE Grand Prix. Yeah, and uh, actually, yeah, it was with colours reversed, so Aronian was white. But his opening preparation in those two games was extremely impressive. If I remember against Hikaru Nakamura, he played a line that wasn't the computer's top choice. Viewers were surprised, uh, Nakamura was surprised, but he just seemed to have it all planned out. He'd uh, predicted the mistakes that Nakamura would make. So right now, if we talk about the position, black is down a rook for a knight and a pawn. So not a huge material. Uh, imbalance, but it's more about the kings right now. White's king is in the center, about to be checked. Uh, look at that open file. Black's king stuck in the center as well and won't castle anymore. This, this is one of those openings, David, uh, you, you mentioned yesterday about systems, yeah. um, which we saw uh, Richard, I think it was yesterday, Richard reports play a system opening where each move has a like long-term idea. Um, like a strategy, quite an in-depth strategy, positional strategy behind it. But this opening, I would say, is completely the opposite. Yeah. This is the opposite to what we call a system opening. This is a, a crash-bang-wallop opening. <laughs> this is literally like, go for it. You need to memorise your moves here. Um, you need to have done your homework. You need to have used chessable, for example, and, and done lots of, uh, lots of background work. Because if you do one move wrong in the opening here, and they're banging out their moves, but if you forget your move at any moment, you could just be losing because it's so sharp. There's a material um, imbalance on the board. And um, yeah, you, you, your memory needs to be great in order to play uh, this, this type of opening for yeah. both sides. Yeah. Um especially for black though, because black's material down and black's king is stuck in the center for the rest of the game. So I think the stakes are slightly higher for Aronian, but as Simon said, yeah, you need to know your plans. You need to know your direct moves for both sides. And uh, it's still very interesting because they are still following a game that was played, I think in 2021 in December between uh, two players in Budapest. And uh, I can just also see by checking the cloud database that has actually been heavily analysed. There's been many people looking at this particular position over the last year. It's really, you use this cloud database all the time, Ivanka, since the, since the World Championships. And it's a great indication, it seems, of uh, what the top players and their seconds might be investigating. Mm. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. It's like being a spy. You know, you'll find out all their secret works. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but it's, again, this, they're, they're still moving so quickly. And, you know, if, if anyone's wondering, is this theory still, are they following stuff? As Yuvanka says, yes, 100%. Uh, and they both would have uh, done a lot of work, I, I think, to, on this position. But it's, it's, it's not really general principles as much, though, is it? It's like, this is the modern kind of chess that you see a lot. This is like, compute. what does the computer say? You know, can I get away with this kind of thing? But um, David, I guess Black's got this um, flux of pawns on the queen side, which is a, which is great compensation um, for, for the exchange down he's got and a nice square in the middle of the board. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned the square in the middle of the board. One of the knights will try and blockade white central pawn. It's an isolated pawn after all. Uh, but first, Arjun moves again. He moves his knight out of the way. Uh, yeah, I mean, this type of opening strategy is so risky for Levon Aronian. 
Partly, as we mentioned, Black is exchanged down. Uh, that, he, that means he is a rook for just a knight down. But the Black King in the centre, such a target. <laughs> and most of all, it's a stylistic thing. Arjun, his biggest strength is his opening preparation. He clearly knows what's going on here. He's clearly studied it very, very deeply. He's got 17 minutes on the clock now. He's even gained two minutes. And Levon, whether he's still in book, whether he's still trying to, you know, go into the memory banks right now, it's unclear. But you, know, you can't bluff this type of position. You would, can't just freestyle. Would you play this as black, David? Never, ever, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I it's, it's a stylistic thing. It's not yeah. my style. But even if, I'd, even if I'd studied this for 20, 30 hours, this exact position, trying to memorise, even if I had all the best notes out there, I would never dream of touching it against someone like Eric Icy. Yeah. Maybe about, against a less well-prepared player. Though. Yeah, sure. What about you, Ivanka? Would you give this a go? Or? Well, not this exact line. I mean, it's just a little bit too wild for my liking. But uh, I did have an incident, actually, quite recently, where we, but myself and my opponent just bashed out all these moves. And then I just made a terrible error. You know, I just got my ideas, my move order confused, and that was it. I was completely lost. That, and uh, that kind of thing, it's not really chess, it's just a memory test. I, that's and what it's unfortunate. I hate. I kind of hate that about modern day chess a bit. Uh, probably because my memory is not as good as these youngsters. And, uh, and you have to do a lot of work, right, to, to keep up the latest theory. And you can avoid this way of playing, though. I mean, it's, if you don't want to play this way, you, you can play more positional systems. Uh, so it, it's kind of, it is a stylistic. Um, choice, as David says, really, what, what kind of style you want to mm -hmm. uh, impose on the board. But yeah. this is like, yeah, like you say, if you play one bad move here, especially if you're black, because black's under more danger, you just lose. And it's yeah. as simple as that. So. But having said that, the same goes for white, right? If white starts making a series of inaccuracies, then maybe black is the one that can take over in the long term. And, uh, well, Levon retreats his dark square bishop. I reckon as soon as um, maybe here Arjun slows down, that's going to be like when Aronian's made a mistake yeah. <laughs> because because he's probably like looked at this with the computer and as soon as Aronian doesn't play the computer's top move, probably here, David, yeah. um, it's, gonna, it's an indication that his speed, that, that he hasn't looked at this position and maybe Aronian's made a mistake. That often happens, yeah. right? So, I always breathe yeah. a sigh of relief when my opponent starts slowing down, having yeah. think, I was like, OK, at least we're out of book. At least I've made at a least... mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's quite scary as well. No, because the thing is that if you make a, mis make a serious mistake and they know about it, they're yeah. still carrying on right. blitzing. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. No, it's true. I mean, and in these positions, even if you make a mistake, they're so complex, you've got to, you know, to take advantage of them is, is still going to be tricky. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, this is so hard to explain this position, yeah. but it's uh, it, it's now White who, who has the move. It's hard to explain, Simon, but should yeah. we try? <laughs> Give it yes, a go, please. David. Yeah. Let's jump in. Give it a I go. can understand by the bar that uh, Arjun has a great advantage in this game. Yeah, it's a great advantage, but uh, as we've been discussing, it's the type of advantage that could just disappear in one move. Wow. If White is inaccurate, maybe it will go. We'll see the evaluation bar swing to black side. Um, so for the first time in the game, Arjun hasn't studied this position. Uh, so he didn't study this bishop retreat that Levon Aronian just made. And this bishop re retreat, it's a bit odd to me. Uh, first of all, it's kind of counterintuitive to allow your opponent to take a bishop with their knight, uh, because now suddenly white has the bishop pair. But Aronian is arguing that especially this bishop is not an effective piece right now. This bishop is a bit stuck. Maybe it can step back at some point, but it's not going anywhere anytime soon. It's just staring against these really strong pawns. Remember, this is black's kind of main advantage in the position, the potential long-term of these mm. three pawns. So that's a long-term factor, kind of neutralising the bishop right now. So I don't think Arjun's going to immediately capture this bishop, but so many other tempting moves. You could use this piece, which is actually the better of white's two bishops. You can bring it to this square, maybe, pin the black knight here. You could possibly bring it to this square, pin this black knight. Mm. Um, those are the first two moves that come to my mind. Um, you could make an argument for capturing the black knight and kind of shattering the black pawn structure over here. These are really weak pawns right now. But on the downside, potentially you do allow black's rook uh, and a file towards your king later, so that one has to be weighed up carefully. There's a lot of tension um, if we go back on white's knight right now. It is attacked by black's knight, so I'm thinking that Arjun will either use his bishop and create a pin or he'll, touch, or he'll kind of move his knight, trade it off for something. But uh, there's a lot of choice, as we mentioned. This bishop has two very nice squares to jump to. This knight can capture this piece, this piece. You can make an argument for it going this way to attack a pawn. You can make an argument for it maybe sitting on a square like this one. There's quite a lot of arg arguments <laughs> to be made there. So many, <laughs> yeah, so many potential moves.
I mean, it, it is a lot of fun playing these positions when you get out of the theory stage, mm -hmm. because uh, they are so dynamic and, and they're certainly exciting. But uh, you, you're always a little bit worried. Oh no, you know, have I walked into some some you know theory, some opening preparation that my opponent has prepared? And uh, I, I suppose, as you, you said, like the danger, just looking at the position, is quite easy to tell who's under more danger. And, and it must be black because white's king is castled. Yeah. White's got the extra exchange, which could be, you know, you've got more material. Uh, and, you know, just king safety is, is the first thing to always consider, I'd say. Uh, and the queens are on the board. I think black would love to get the queens off the board, yeah. right? Um, and Definitely. that's, I suppose, in the ending, black's queen side pawns, cause that, that's what he's aiming for, to try and trying to use those guys to, to queen, to get another queen uh, later on. But he's, he, it's not easy. he can't get the queens off the board easily yeah. in this type It'll of position. 20 odd moves before you can start pushing these pawns as black. So you just need to survive the next 20, uh, 20 or so moves. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, survival is not going to be easy. You said that uh, the other three black pawns, that mm -hmm. they are very weak, but with the king not being behind them, yeah. could it be a couple of pawns that, you know, Levon can just push forwards and he doesn't really have to keep them down there. Yeah, I mean, for example, if White's Knight were to make a passive move and retreat somewhere, um, I'm not sure exactly where, then you could see someday um, you need to prepare it, but someday eventually Black pushing these pawns towards the White King, definitely, because Black's King is not on that side of the board. But uh, at the moment, yeah, they lack a bit of uh, defence and they become weaker, especially if White trades off and uh, doubles up these guys. So. White can make those pawns weak, but uh, at the same time, they are potentially uh, something that uh, Aronia will try and mobilise a bit later, these pawns. Mm -hmm. And, OK, I was going to suggest this move, but it looks... Uh, well, I mean, firstly, I couldn't calculate it. Uh, Eric Geisy spent his time calculating that. But secondly, um, it looks like it just gives up a pawn. So he's pushed this pawn forward. It was an isolated pawn, and Aronian has just grabbed it. He's just saying, saying I'm calling your bluff. I can take that pawn. The whole idea Eric Geisy uh, has by giving up that pawn is that he wants to open up lines towards the Black King. Without the white pawn now, he's a bit closer to breaking through on the D file. For example, he can throw his bishop out the way now with a check, gaining a bit more time. Suddenly, the white queen has come to life. Uh, on this file, it's all kind of hanging together by a thread for black. I'm not sure what black's move is here, to be honest, because if, for example, you try and block this check with your bishop, then suddenly after knight takes knight, the pawn has to recapture. It's all re really, really loose. This knight is, oh, it feels like it's about to drop off. Instead, Erigaisi, um, slightly surprisingly, captures the bishop first, but maybe now he's going to deliver a check with yeah, his bishop. I mean, do you have to move the king forwards? Yeah, that looks, it's the kind of move I... Oh, I just, it just looks like so ugly, uh, but what else can you play? I mean, yeah. maybe this is maybe the you move. can run and hide on this square at some point. Yeah. But you block your bishop, like you say, it's ugly. We're going to see this. Yeah. Yeah, we're definitely... I really like this pawn sacrifice that um, Eric Geisy did, because when I was looking at the position, I was thinking, White's Rook in the corner, not doing a job, and probably doesn't have a future, but here, the queen and the rook can coordinate, mm -hmm. and now it's just about activating the light square bishop. And once she's in the game, well, I think white is in great shape. Yeah, I mean, yeah the rook's coming, like you said. It's a nasty yeah. check. And the white queen, of course, could not go to this square previously because there was a white pawn there, which wasn't doing much, actually, because yeah. it was going to be blockaded. So now this white queen is looking very, very active there. Maybe the rook coming behind it as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you'd love to get the if you're playing with white pieces, get the light square bishop into the game. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you can do that, but if you could get it to where the white pawn is, then then yeah, it'd be it'd be just all over, yeah. I think. Um, Maybe later, if you get time, you can push it forward and then activate the bishop on this diagonal somehow. But you have to. I mean, can you can you up. can you? I, I want to sacrifice it. I, um, the bishop. Well, I, I, I don't know if I do, but I, I want to think about sacrificing it, uh, and and then maybe just calmly, you know, just try to open up the position more. Yeah. But it's a little bit, a little bit over the top, yeah. probably, to do this. I mean, it feels like at the moment there's no breakthrough really. Black will just control the light squares and yeah, no, the knights at least defensively they're okay. A bit, bit too much probably, um, but definitely in store for later maybe. Um, yeah, I think just automatic, just improve the rook, the worst place piece, and the attack goes on. But maybe black has a mini threat here. Maybe black is threatening to play queen into the middle, trying to get those queens off. Mm -hmm. I mean, I say a threat, it, it, it's not uh, obviously winning it. Okay, that's why he's moved the bishop back, maybe to just stop this idea. Because black would love to get those queens off then. Uh, and I think if black can do that, maybe black is better then if we can mm -hmm. exchange them off. So 
Hence why White stopped that with his last move. So yeah, if the rooks come off, for example, if we see a capture of rooks, at least White controls all the lines. So White has the better bishops, White has the queen, the rooks, all the linear pieces. Black has uh, the knights, which are a bit stuck, just defending each other right now. So the computer says 0, 0.0. This looks anything but a draw. <laughs> it's uh, still livening up this game. We do have a draw already, though. The first game between Anish Giri and Jan Christoph Duda after uh, less than 15 minutes. That one ended with a draw. They have uh, 15 minutes break and uh, game two. We'll start with uh, Jan Christoph Duda having the white pieces in the second game. Ha, that was a quick draw. Yeah. Yeah, very, very quick. Yeah. yeah. Surprising as well because the position was still full of life and they found a way to repeat the position. Mm. Feels like Anish was a bit afraid, maybe, or uncertain how to continue. Uh -huh. And we also see in uh, the first game between Wei Yi and Sam Sevian, the bar all the way over to Wei Yi's side, starting with the white pieces. Tough start to uh, the knockout stage for Sevian, who ended up on top in the preliminaries. And as mentioned, we are asking you guys to help us decide which games and which matches to uh, keep the closest eye on today. And typically enough, the day we decide to do this, Twitter is having technical issues. So uh, the poll on Twitter is not really working. So that's why we have now created a poll on Instagram. So head over to the Champions Chess Tour page on Instagram. Uh, click on the stories and you can cast your vote there and we will pay attention to it and um, We will listen to you and choose uh, games according to the matches you guys want yeah. uh, to follow That is uh, that is true and just to add that the retweets are still working So uh -huh. if you still want to enter our competition one year chess 24 premium membership up for grabs Then please retweet the poll on Twitter yes. to be in with a chance to win and did, hopefully Twitter will fix their issues. As did well. Edon take over today by any chance? Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's his first day in the job today. You know, getting in there. He pulled out of... A... I know, I think he has pulled out. Yeah, He's being but... sued by Twitter. Yeah, he is he, right? being sued by Twitter okay. because he pulled out of buying Twitter, correct? Yeah. This is the protest. Yeah, But maybe so. it's just because he wants to play chess. Because you mentioned, David, Elon Musk, he keeps tweeting about chess. Constantly. Yeah. He's, uh, he's obsessed, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, we need to get him on board. Uh, to sponsor the tour. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. Or yeah. even invite him to the celebrity tournament in Miami. Oh, yeah. is this breaking news then? Yeah, there's going to be some fun stuff going on during uh, the major in Miami starting August 15th. Yeah, I hope would... to see some celebrities there. Yeah, it would be interesting to see what uh, the viewers want yeah. as celebrities playing chess. Because there are quite a few celebrities yeah. that do uh -huh. play chess. We've seen Will Smith record a video of himself playing chess. Really? Yeah. Just don't let him get a bit upset. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all right until he loses the game, right? <laughs> don't, don't take his queen. Oh, David. That's OK. I, I, was just, I just meant the queens are off the board in this game, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, lots of celebrities yeah. play chess. Yeah, I, wonder, yeah. I mean, who, who would you pick then? If you could play a game of chess, quite a good... Uh, question for Twitter, but if you could play a game of chess against any celebrity, uh, who, who who would it be? Anyone anyone think of someone, any celebrity at all in the world? Oof. One game. One game. One game. Kaya, can you think? It's a bit of putting putting everyone on the spot. Oh, this is a little bit. I'll give a bit of time to think. Mike maybe. Tyson plays some chess, right? But I don't think I'd really want to play him. <laughs> right, yeah, no, someone so. already licked Simon's ear during who, a chess who, game. Yeah. Probably yeah. not in Mike Tyson. He's really into right. chess, actually. He's an English boxer, and Anthony Joshua, I Anthony think. He's Joshua. Yeah, he's oh, he's, he's super yeah. into chess. You know, yeah. he he went to, to Oxford University to do a talk there, and the first thing he did when he stepped into Oxford is he said, "I want to go to the chess club. I want to play some chess." Yeah. And uh, he played oh. against uh, one of my English women teammates, and he lost. And uh, she told me that he was slightly miffed that he lost. He was kind of <laughs> feeling that, you know, actually really? he was Should in with a chance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. He's a good boxer as well. Yeah, so. yeah, very good boxer. Yeah. yeah and meanwhile, in this game, the queens are off. And Simon, you said that would really benefit black. But um, yeah, Ronian. Has he made a big uh, achievement here by getting the queens off? He still has that three versus one advantage now with the black pawns on the queen side. It does feel like the black king's a bit open though. The white bishops, the white rooks are going to start peering at the black king in the near future. It's really tense. I mean, I just don't know who has the advantage. Uh, simply, it's so imbalanced and the computer says it's roughly level, which doesn't help us at all. That's just infuriating. 
I quite like that move though, because he's making a, a nice square for his king, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the the king didn't really want to step in front of the bishop, but uh, maybe with this last move, he can come behind the bishop yeah. and, and feel quite safe there, actually. And mm -hmm. I think one of the issues that Black's had all, all, so far, as we mentioned, is uh, his king. His king has been really drafty. So by putting it there, you're, you're also maybe getting a bit nearer to supporting your pawns, but it's, uh, I, yeah. I, think, I think I would take black. Yeah, yeah I would take black as well. Yeah. I love that king move that you suggested because it's like overprotecting every single thing. And yeah. uh, of course, you know, the king, if one can dream a little, might even be able to step forward and support the pawns. Um, that would be seriously cool. But for the time being, you know, I think that black should just simply dangle the fact that, you know, he's got three potential past pawns on the left side of the board. Mm -hmm. That's scary. I mean, I know I would be panicking big time. Yeah, number one priority, just survive, just swap off pieces and then uh, use these three guys later. Um, you can bully your opponent with the idea of any endgame being good for black. Uh, and it's level material actually now, so white has a rook for black's knight and two pawns. And uh, the knight and two pawns right now balance the rook, but they could be superior to the rook. And I'm really surprised by this last move, I've got to say, what is the idea behind it? I don't see it. I thought, if anything, maybe White's Bishop would want to use this diagonal at some point. But no, nope, this diagonal's now been blocked, uh, pushing this pawn forward. Really weird from Eric I see. Maybe he just wants to launch a pawn storm, throw this pawn forward, and then this one. But... Mysterious. Very mysterious. And the evaluation bar goes in Black's favour. It feels like just kind of a, a visual move. It's like, oh, my pawn, I'm throwing it forward. It's in your half now, but... What's you, what are you actually achieving? It's unclear. This pawn could be weak even uh, if unsupported later. I think I think Lev will be very happy now um, after sort of getting through some quite quite. I mean, he, he picked this opening. He's picked a very sharp opening, very brave of him, and it indicates to us like he really wants to play uh, with the black pieces. He could have picked something much drier, try to try to get a draw. Uh, do do a, what Niche did or or Duda there, but instead he's like, I want to have some fun. You know, I'm going to pick a very very dangerous variation, and at this moment in time, it's looking like it's a great choice. I mean, uh, I still think White's absolutely okay. Probably, I say probably, I don't actually know. I guess he's okay here, but I, I think this is the kind of position you want when you play this opening, at least uh, unbalanced chances to win. Yeah, I'm just dreaming as black of maybe getting the knight to a better square and then jumping into this one or. Uh, maybe this square later. Uh, it just looks great for Black. And uh, yeah, it's just about Erigaisi. He's sl really slowed down. We talked about Erigaisi being super quick, especially when he's well prepared. And he played the first, what was it, 20, 21 moves instantly. So he's actually spent nine minutes. Oh, he spent more than that because he gained yeah. so much time. He spent more than 10 minutes uh, on his last 10 moves. Wow. Levon, meanwhile, back to what we know, lightning Levon. Yeah. Uh, just bang, 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 all the moves so natural, so instinctive, and they, they have been flowing, what Levon's been doing, mm. every piece yeah. connecting, every, uh, every piece defended, yeah. And, I the, think... and the Black King as well, that wasn't castled, so maybe a weakness in the start of the game. Is that now a big strength for Levon, having that out there, fighting with all his pieces? Yeah, now the Queens are off, the King is pretty safe. Um, still some risk, because White has a couple of heavy pieces, the Rooks and Bishops, mm -hmm. but uh, for now, the King is definitely a valuable piece. And okay, it feels like, Erigais, he's just waiting, maybe just keeping his options open, lifting the rook up, hinting and going after this undefended pawn, which defends the black knight. So that could be slightly annoying for Levon Aronian, but uh, also potentially just doubling up his rooks on the open file. I, th I think often in these uh, double edge positions, it's like, who's got the easier play? Um, even, even, even sometimes when you're a bit worse, it's like, whose moves are more natural to play? Uh, and you can ask yourself that question when you're, you're playing over the board. Um, and it just seems to me like Black's moves, he can do a lot of things like use this square for his knight, he can try pushing his pawns, it's easier for Black to play. And um, there's another reason I, I, I would certainly pick Black here. It's really interesting though, because he's given up a pawn, so White's bishop can now just grab this guy. And uh, what's Levon's idea there? Is he going to just block in this bishop and say, OK, your bishop's a bit out of play now. Uh, you, it takes you a while to kind of relocate it to a better diagonal. Or is he just going to use the fact that the bishop's offside and start pushing? 
these three now look pretty menacing. Ooh, They're like yeah. the, the bad girls minus one. <laughs> Is that what you call them? The mean girls. <laughs> the mean girls. The mean girls, but, but I, one's been taken out. Yeah. <laughs> three musketeers. I, I, three musketeers. I love that pawn yeah. construction. But on the other hand, I, I think it's really tempting just to block out the dark square bishop and uh, force it onto a, a, a worse diagonal and then... The action begins with the pawns. And uh, you can see Aragaisi said, no, I want none of that. And uh, instead moves the rook to attack some pawns. Yeah. And it's one of the things that I was looking at in this particular position, because it's so complicated. And uh, of course, there is a material imbalance. White has a rook. Black, in return, has a knight. I mean, how do you make use of this rook on a1? I mean, I mean, what trades does white have to make in order to maximize the rook pair? I guess he leaves it there just to try to deal with those pawns. I mean, I, I, I kind of, you know, I like what White's done in some, in some respects with the other rook. This is very clever to create this counterplay. And I think White, you know, one, one rook's doing all the damage, leave the other rook to defend kind of thing, maybe. Mm -hmm. This is what he's trying to do. And uh, mm -hmm. at, at least he's created some counterplay. And that, that is the main thing, right, to, to, to try and get some play in the position. And White, White has done that now. And, you know, he's got a simple plan, take some pawns, queen, queen the h-pawn. Yeah. Um, it's like so. you said earlier, Simon, this position, it's not about general principles, so we can't just say, OK, um, which piece am I going to improve as white? There's no real targets. Uh, it's not clear what we're doing. Instead, it's just direct calculation, attack, uh, attack, and just hope for the best. Yeah. Um, I think it's that, just that type of position right now. Um, Black's the one who's trying to create plans, but now Black has to solve this issue with his pawns. And OK, now the Black Bishop goes after Freddy the F-pawn. Maybe White's Rook is just going to jump in, take a pawn, and take this guy. Is Levon's idea to try and trap this Rook? OK, we'll find out. It's the idea to trap this Rook. But no, it wasn't. It was actually in this position to jump the Black Knight in. He's really trying to either eliminate this Bishop or push these pawns. So, so it's getting really funky, isn't it? It's <laughs> the only word I can think, really. Funky chess. <laughs> Levon <laughs> feeling like uh, freestyling a little bit today, just uh, testing Arjun here in the first game. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Funky chess. Definitely. Funky he's chess. Going, he's I like going that. funky. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a word that suits the Ronian, right? He's kind of a funky he's got, person. Well, he's got really funky shirts. Yeah. Hasn't he? I love his funky shirts. And uh, he seems like a funky guy. Yeah. yeah. So, definitely. And funky chess, that must mean entertaining chess. Yeah, it's entertaining chess, but is it good chess? Yeah. That's the question. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, he's entertaining us, clearly. But Levon, he's not really using that much of his time, and he's made some really committal decisions on the last couple of moves. So, he has brought his knight to the center. Threatening to push those pawns now. The problem is for Levon Aronian is if all of his pawns disappear on the right half of the board, then even if he gets his other pawns rolling, White at some point can just sacrifice a piece for all of those pawns, deal with that issue, and I don't know, you're just running out of pawns. You're just left in, with your position in ruins. Yes, you might win some material long term, but short term, I'm really worried about Levon's chances. I would just continue grabbing pawns with the White Rook, just ignore what's going on right now on the other flank. You could make an argument for White's dark squared bishop just stepping away from any potential threats. Was, okay. it, was A3 a little threat Both. maybe? Or yeah, I don't know, potentially. Maybe not, but this seems like very wise, doesn't it? To, now A3 is not a threat and mm. at least White's got an idea. He's got past pawn now as well, yeah. so which is nice. So. I read the H pawn. Yeah, our favourite pawn, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> it's so. not doing much right now, looks really innocent, but give it a few moves to march up the board. It promotes on a dark square, which is always the key when you have a dark square bishop, right? Yeah. So uh, White's H-pawn could be a winner later. But first, Levon Aroni, this was his idea all along, to lure the White Bishop into his camp and then try and mm. trap it, kind of lock it out of the game. But So it's complex. Not, I mean, It's I not too hard to get out of that, yeah, right? That's the problem. It just takes two or three moves and you're back yeah. to a good square. I, st I still take black here. I still, cause I, I, li I like yeah. something, I like his centralization. And, you love and, your fun positions. It's more I fun as black, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's probably, it's probably bad, but I, I, I kind of... I just kind of like the way those pawns, those pawns seem like they're going to start coming soon, surely. <laughs> Pieces in the middle, that's got to be a good thing. I mean, yeah. uh, I don't know. Yeah, they're not easy to mobilise, though, for the time being. But uh, I have to say, I also quite like Black's position. Even though White does have the extra material, yeah. those pawns are just too scary. I mean, am, am I threatening A3 to, to, you know, just try to queen? OK, not anymore. So um, we have another move, David. Yeah, White trying to get the rooks off. Makes some yeah. sense. Black's rook was maybe the supporter of any pawn pushers on this side of the board. So if the rooks disappear, you would think that that favours 
um, favours white. But if we do see a rook trade, white's bishop will be stuck in the corner. And then it will take a few squares, uh, a few turns to kind of get back out, get back into the game. I mean, I think black's got to get a pass pawn here, right? So mm -hmm. it, let's say you take Seems the rooks possible. and then, you know, I don't know, King, King C5 or C3, maybe. Mm -hmm. Just got to get those pawns moving now. It's going to be a race, isn't it? Queen side pawns, black's uh, pawns coming down, and then that, that Harry pawn probably coming up the board, I think. It's going to be really, yeah. really exciting, the end game here. Yeah. So. yeah. White's pawn will run. Black's pawns may be starting with, like you said, moving the king forward, and then at some point you push this guy, get rid of white's lone ranger, and then push your pawns. But, yeah. uh, okay, first he actually takes the time out to remove a pawn of white's. And here we go, the race has started. Things are really going to heat up over the next few moves. Ooh, that's cool. Now, Simon, so, mean, you mentioned uh, Levon's funky style, and uh, both when it comes to his uh, chess playing and his funky shirts. There actually is a, a cool news story on uh, the Chess 24 wall right now uh, about uh, the Chess Olympiad. So apparently, FIDE has uh, decided to ask uh, the players to uh, think like fashionista. There's going to be prizes during the Olympiad for the best dressed team. What do you guys think about that? Um, I think that's very cool. Yeah, I mean, I think they, I think it was maybe David who mentioned it earlier, the Borat, or maybe me, I don't know. <laughs> the, the, we want to see a team turn up in mankinis, basically. That, that, that deserves a prize from FIDE, surely. I mean, if there's no dress code, <laughs> it's encouraging, yeah, creativity, right? And, uh, yeah. It is. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like it, I, I, you know, because they... It's a bit stuffy when you have to wear like a, a suit. You might be uncomfortable. I mean, I I hate wearing you know stuffy clothes and yeah. I avoid it, especially if you're trying to play a good game of chess, right? So, so I like I like the idea. It's cool, yeah. but yeah, yeah, it's likely to be very very warm over there in India it's as well. True. So, yeah, it's it's nice not to have to wear a tie during the games, and um, yeah, maybe that'll be England's best chance. That, Best chance for a prize. <laughs> well, your option prize. Well, you he could be leading that. the way, couldn't you? No. With your, uh, you know, with your actually, style. Actually, yeah. If any your of the viewers have kick. suggestions, what clothes I could wear, oh, maybe yeah. going away from the suits. I can or something think. Else. I can think of a nice uh, full body. Uh, thing that you've you've maybe worn before, oh, uh, <laughs> potentially. Um, <laughs> no tinky winky. <laughs> no tinky winky. Could, or this uh, one. Uh, this was uh, the English team. Was it the previous Olympia? Yeah, it was the previous Olympia. Uh, very nice those blazers. Four years ago. Yeah, yeah. they they did very well. Uh, our English men's team and yeah. also the women's team also did well. Um, I have to admit, I was the one responsible for inflicting these terrible jackets on them. <laughs> Banker wanted uh, us to look like naughty schoolboys. No, boys. no. What happened was that there was a, no. What, well, the whole idea was that those would be dark navy, and the, the stripes would be a lot thinner. So think Tommy Hilfiger. Yeah, yeah. That was that was the look, and this is what came. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're quite nice. And it was like, I like them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I have to say, it actually suits the women's team better than the men. Yeah. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> but they did uh, they did bring us luck. Ever since these uh, these jackets were introduced, we came fifth in the Olympiad, we came second in the World Team Championship, we, and we also got medals at the European Team Championship and we hadn't won medals before that for 21 years. So, they so brought will us luck, we see those, those in India in Chennai this year? Uh, maybe, <laughs> unless the viewers have uh, better ideas. I like it. And will the team have to wear the same uh, kind of clothing? I guess not forced to, but it's a nice touch, right? If you're all combining, you feel more like a team if you're all in the mm. similar outfits. And well, with Levon uh, in the uh, US team, I bet he's going to ask the other US players to wear something funky, maybe. That's going to be interesting to see. Fabiana Caruana, Wesley So turning up in flowery shirts <laughs> with Levon. They should, like Hawaii shirts, right? Yeah, it's Hawaii a US shirts. team. Oh, that would be cool. Let's see if uh, we will have some funky blazers and shirts in the Olympiad. And uh, are we having any funky moves? Yeah. But potentially, um, this game is going to get even weirder over the next few moves. It could still come down to the race that we were discussing. This last move by Erigaisi offering a bishop trade. Take that bishop or don't take that bishop? Big question right now for Levon, and I'm going to pose it to you guys as well. Simon Yuranka, take that bishop or leave that bishop? I would say no thank you. I mean, I think the light square bishop is needed just to slow down those white pawns. I mean, especially... If you take a look at the age pawn, you know, it's four moves away from queening and uh, those black knights are needed to assist those black pawns, the trio over there on the left. That's my answer. Yeah. yeah no mean, calculation. I, I think that's why Lev, it's really, yeah, I, I agree with you just on principle, that age pawn looks so strong. And I think this is why Lev's just slowed down. It's like a critical moment because if you do take the bishop, it's just a race. 
And it mm. is just pure calculation because you can, as David's showing, take that and just start pushing as well. And uh, let's say, you, I mean, this could be, this is actually quite easy to calculate, right? Because there, there's only one move at a time you have to envision. So David here, I don't know if you want to show, but if you push that pawn on and white pushes, what on earth is going on here? I mean, who? someone's going to get first, but who is it? Because black's pawns look quite quick as well, right? Yeah. With the C pawn moving next or the, the B pawn. I mean, it, it's just one of those things you can calculate. And I think Lev's doing a very good job of calculating this. Yeah. Um, Who's I mean, winning here? I mean, it's, it's, it's no idea. <laughs> really, yeah, really yeah. sharp stuff, right? Yeah. But maybe black's ahead. Maybe, maybe black's ahead, although, maybe. What, I mean, bishop takes, for example, getting out the way of white's pawn oh, and yeah. something like this. Or even bishop takes knight there might be. Oh, yeah, might bishop be, takes, yeah, that's yeah. actually very yeah. strong. And uh, suddenly white's pawn is just too far away for the black knight to deal with. Okay, also two pawns versus one. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, this is the type of thing going through Levon's mind right now. He's thinking, if I take the bishops off, if I trade these guys off, whose pawn is quicker, my pawn or your pawn? And if you don't trade the bishops, you might have to lose a move, you might have to retreat. Maybe there's a knight f4 there, check there, there f4 which is a very useful tempo yeah, gainer, actually. In Maybe. this position, and potentially, uh, I don't know. thinking after the king moves, the uh -huh, knight okay. gets trapped. This is the problem. Okay, does that trapped. matter though? Like knight g3 or oh, something? Oh, hang on a second. <laughs> Crazy. We, okay. we, we saw it. a trade. Yeah. We did see the exchange happen, and instead of pushing um, on the last move, instead of pushing the pawn, as we were just showing in that last variation, which would have been a pure race, black knight has jumped in. Now I think you're right, Simon. Um, a pawn push might well be met by a knight check and a capture of this pawn. So maybe haste is not good here for white, but if you're not quick, then this pawn drops. Oof. Very exciting position here. I mean... Uh, Computer thinks white's ahead in the race, but right. from a human point of view, it's just guesswork. It's yeah. just calculation and yeah. hoping for the best. Oh, yeah. So it's so hard to play this position, right? I mean, again, it's been the whole way through the game. One mistake, you lose. Uh, I thought it calmed down after the Queen exchange, but this, <laughs> it hasn't. It's got, it's got even more intense. Not with these players. Yeah. No. It's great to see him play like this. Definitely. And uh, yeah, here it's, it's all about like which side can utilize their team yeah. in order to offensive, be on the defensive, but also be on the defensive as well. I, I um, mean, uh, yeah, I agree, Ivanka. And I, I, one very good strategy when you're playing against the Knights is to try and restrict them, right, with your pawns. Uh, and may, maybe, maybe here you could just restrict that check, you know, by, by pushing the pawn and we're back to the race again. But. For example, knight takes pawn, this guy runs, white, uh, black runs, white runs. It does look like white's a bit quicker here because yeah. there's nothing stopping white's pawn, whereas white's rook acts as a stopper for black's pawn. Uh, okay, similar idea he's utilised. Instead of this, uh, he's used his rook to come across. And, okay, a bit strange to use the rook rather than a pawn, but I guess his idea is the same. After knight takes pawn, he's just going to push. Now his rook covers any knight check on this square. And, uh, yeah, Eric Icy ahead in the race. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, these the positions are so mind-boggling. I mean, you, totally, you have. Totally. I mean, you kind of need a lot more time than they have yeah. to figure out all the in intricacies. You know, sit there, spend ten minutes in just complete harmony, thinking about this and uh, being focused. And the players just don't have that a luxury. Uh, I mean, I do think here that um, the stakes are much, much higher for Levon Aronian. Because if things go wrong for him, white just makes a queen with Harry the H-pawn. If things go really wrong for white, however, then you can just give up your rook, give up for the black, uh, give up your bishop for all of the black pawns. Black has two knights at the end, and two knights alone cannot give checkmate against a king. So, for example, if you imagine all of the pawns disappearing from the current position, white's rook and bishop also disappearing, it's still a draw. So, white has this kind of exit strategy if he really needs like a last resort. Uh, I could imagine, for example, the white rook giving itself up for all the black pawns, the white bishop giving itself up, and still it would be a draw. So that's why you need to know your end games. And uh, I don't think we'll see two knights versus a king because I think white here is doing pretty well. Um, just start running now, Arjun, with that h pawn. But it's nice to know that you do have a bit of safety in your back pocket. And uh, less than two minutes on the clock for Arjun Erigaisi. Remember, we are asking you guys to be editor-in-chief on the show today. We want to hear from you guys which matches you want us to pay the closest attention to. And actually, right now, Jan-Christoph Duda and against Anish Giri is the one in the lead. 
Aronian against Eric Geisy, a good number two, but uh, that means we will have to pay close attention to as well to Duda against Giri. And they are currently playing game two. They played a super fast draw in the first game, now in game two. So hopefully we can jump to that after this one finishes. And this one, will we see a win? Will we see a draw? What, what's going to happen? You said it yesterday, Simon, These the craziest games in chess. They normally go one way, another way, another way, one side attacking, the other side attacking, but it always seems to end in a draw. Yeah, they do, don't they? <laughs> they, it's, they it's, why does that happen? It's like, yeah, I mean, forget about the computer evaluation. It's obviously gone a bit mental today, you know. It's just going to be a draw. Everything gets swapped off, draw, shake hands, but we're, we're a long way away from that. It's just a really strange imbalance. And, well, we now see that white is fully ready to push push the H pawn, so black's got to got to get moving as well. And, oh, there you go, the evaluation bar has finally caught up and uh, agrees that it's just a, dead, just a dead draw. Boring. Get on with the next game. Nothing to see here. Um, so, uh, yeah. But I was going to ask about the psychological um, impact of uh, Arjun's last moves, because, you know, we, we saw he didn't push the H pawn. He instead went for a little bit of a safer move, I think, of when bishop takes pawn. Is he feeling the pressure? You do think that maybe he's kind of lost in that fog, which tends to happen when you do feel the clock ticking down? Uh, potentially. Um, maybe he's just trying to be really perfectionist, playing really accurate moves. It feels like not pushing the pawn. He's just trying to be a bit too sophisticated in a way. I'm curious here, can we see the stockfish moves? Because yeah. I'm trying to see what... Uh, there might only be one play. move. Um, you think there's only one move? I look at the move. Oh, that... you're right. What? So, OK, one <laughs> move holds the balance. Everything else gives white what could be a potentially decisive advantage. And do you think he'll find this? No. I would never dream of this move. We have to show it on the board because black's best move in the current position is so weird. This knight looks glorious, it's on a protected outpost, but to put it on this square with a check on the edge of the board, offering itself up for the white rook as well, that is the best move. The whole idea is rook takes knight, suddenly the, the white rook has been deflected and black can take the bishop, and suddenly black's knight is actually on the dream square, guarding both of the white pawns. So it's very specific here. Actually, in general, you don't really want to trade a knight for bishop because the white pawns will run, but here the black knight is actually on a decent outpost, and I Top. guess... Yeah. Time for a bet. Ooh. I mean, I, I, I would say he... I mean, how can you find a move like that? I mean, I know Aronian's a genius, but that move, it, that is just such a weird move. Put your knight in a city square where it could be taking... I, I, I don't think he can find this move. No offence to Aronian. He's a great player, but, you know... you. I, what do you reckon, Yvanka? Do you think he'll find this one? Or? Yeah, I think he's going to find it. I mean, I, really? I didn't see yeah, it, wow. but uh, I think maybe... Oh, you've got a lot of faith in the man. So, David? Yeah. Maybe we can keep yeah. an eye on the players just in case he plays it, but yeah. I think no. I, I, I mean, mean, it's so weird. Knights on the edge of the board. Yeah. We're taught when we're young, don't look at those types of moves. It's also on a protected square. Automatically, subconsciously in the head, we rule out kind of putting pieces on squares where they can, they can just be captured. The only way he can find this is process of elimination. It's looking at the black pawn moves, figuring out those are too slow. Looking at other knight moves, figuring out those don't do anything. 40, 40 right. seconds left oh. as well. I mean, maybe with yeah. maybe with 30 minutes on his clock, I think he'd find it. Yeah, but I mean, one the, minute. If he well, finds this move, it'll be incredible. I mean, I, I really hope he finds it, but... No, no he doesn't. Oh, oh doesn't well, move. there you go. And uh, it looks like white might well be winning now. White is ahead in the race. This pawn push now... There we go. It's all about Alice, the A-pawn, against Harry, the H-pawn. And Harry has a clear run through to goal. Note how Alice, the A-pawn, is protected. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a promotion square. It's protected twice. So, uh, yeah, just one shot. One Ooh, and five seconds for Levon as well. Clock is... Oh, now he sees it. Oh, he but it's, oh, but it's one move too late. Oh, oh that's really oh. sad, right? Because if you'd have played it so last it was move, on his it, radar. But why oh. is it not a good move anymore? I've got no idea. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think absolutely no if idea. If I were to say it's because no. uh, the white pawn, uh, the H pawn, has stepped up to the fifth row. So before, the knight sitting on F6 would have stopped both pawns. As it is, mm -hmm. it's only going to stop one. Uh -huh. Big question as well. Does white have to take this knight? Maybe we can see the stockfish moves again. Should white take this knight or not? Because if you take this knight, then the white bishop would have dropped. He doesn't take the knight. Is that a good move? Is that a good decision? Now the black knight's rerouted. 
This is still a race. I mean, it looks like Black is going to get there first, but I think Arjun has a trick up his sleeve. White's Bishop as well is so strong. Note no, how White's Bishop covers the promotion square for Black. And if Black wants to go and remove the White Bishop by trading it off, White will recapture it with a check. So can he continue pushing here, Arjun? Whoever queens first is going to protect the queening square of the opponent's pawn. That's the trick with rook's pawns. When one side's pushing a rook's pawn, the other side, whoever queens first protects the corner square. So it looks like white, according to the evaluation bar, but is there a trick now for Aronian? I'm so happy we picked this game. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all the game, I mean, look at this. One square from queening, both okay. sides. Both of them. Both of them. Both Just of them. And, uh... Ten seconds for Levon. Yeah, it's yeah. difficult anyway. I don't think he's going to find a saving move here. Is, what can he play? Is there any way you can keep the game going even? You uh, have to just take that bishop and hope. Yeah. Okay, he moves his king. But the problem is, look at this, it is a check. And now white makes a queen defending the corner square and miraculously both sides made queens and the queens have both disappeared <laughs> immediately. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, it's so rare to see that. And now it's all about another race. Yeah. White's pawn yeah. is running. but. Black's pawns are surely going to be too slow now. They are way too slow. And white's king uh, is going to stop them. The white pawn just has that free run. You know, it's going to be unchallenged until the very end. And it's totally hopeless for Levon Aronian. Oh, I think he loses by just one move as well, and his king is just too far away. Aronian, I mean, if, if he resigns, we will show why. There's a really nice variation in the air right now if Black pushes his pawns. But, uh, yeah, no way to save this game anymore. Great, great play from Arjun and also Ronian. You know, to, he missed a couple of moves, but you can see him shaking his head now. He, he's he's realising that he's a little bit slow here. Yeah. Still have to be a bit careful. I mean, if you push the pawn now, for example. Yeah, um, Black has a massive threat. You have to yeah. stop the Black pawn coming down one more square. So you can do that by, I guess, stepping your king across one square. You can bring your rook to the second rank, maybe. And... Uh, you could also step your king forward one square, potentially, just so the white rook will come down and block on the first rank. There's a few moves. Or oh, maybe we can see the stockfish uh, evaluations again, because how narrow is the winning path for white? There are three winning moves, at least. Oh. Maybe more. He is winning. So is the rook move maybe a mistake, or is it going to be...? Which rook? The rook move does... moving to the second row. Well, <laughs> okay, well, he's, done it. It, he's done it, but okay, so it's... But why would this be a mistake? It looks no, like... No, it, it, it looks completely winning, right? Because when Black tries to push Charlie, the sea pawn, the king will step across, and we're seeing it. Look how the white king and rook are completely stopping the black pawns, and we'll no. see a really nice finish here after rook yeah. takes pawn, and the black knight is trapped, white's pawn runs through and wins. And he's smiling, lovely smile. It's uh, over. What a start for Arjun Ergaizi. The 18-year-old takes the lead in the match against the great Levon Arroyo.